Welcome to CSET Biology, the cover page. I am Mr. Wilson, and today we're going to be looking at the Human and Social Biology, May, June 2020. Question number six. This is part of our exam preparation topics. So we're looking at pollution, and we want to define the term pollutant. Now, pollutant refers to any contaminant that is introduced to an ecosystem or the environment and of course this pollutant will cause harm to the environment and all that inhabits the environment say two examples of air pollutants other than carbon dioxide they are many we would have carbon monoxide lead ozone hydrocarbon sulfur dioxide particulates these are suspended solid oxides of nitrogen pathogen just to name a few identify two sources of air pollutant if we we're supposed to look at a uh, carbon monoxide we're getting that from the exhaust of vehicle with the burning of fossil fuel and we also get that from the emission or what we refer to as the cigarette smoke there's also the burning of fossil fuel which releases uh, sulfur dioxide Please be reminded to join us on a Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday at 5.05 p.m. for live classes streaming from Kingston, Jamaica. Figure 9 depicts the percentage of carbon dioxide produced by yearly transportation activities of residents in a town. Now here we have the pie chart with the bulk of the emission coming from vacation traveling. That's about 49%. Then we have hometown travel. That's about 19%. And then we have daily commute. And that's of course 32%. Important to note here that vacationers are the persons who are causing the most problem for this particular area. Our question most residents go on vacation once a year but commute to work or school approximately five days a week explain why vacation traveling produces significantly more carbon dioxide than the daily commute and suggest two ways which the amount of carbon dioxide produced from the daily commute may be reduced all right first people in most cases commuting to work uh, on this five day uh, week they are doing so via public transportation so what you're going to be having is less cars per person this of course is going to reduce the amount of carbon emission from motor vehicle being on the road another thing in most cases these vehicles are driven uh, a little less recklessly than would be a person on vacation so then we're going to be having less emission from these vehicle and less emission as a result of less vehicle being on the road per person while on vacation usually travelers travel in units so i'll be on vacation and i have a car my neighbor might have a car uh my friends coming down they will have a car too and what you'll find is that a whole lot of cars are on the road there's no real uh pooling of uh persons commuting so we tend to have way more vehicles on the road as persons are a little more affluent so they create a little more problem with the money that they have now so that leads to more emission of carbon on the road because they have the money to pay for the fossil fuel and they need to get here they need to get there and they just keep moving and that creates a problem that they will leave behind ways in which we could get over this problem of carbon dioxide with the daily commute is to use a vehicle that operate um green fuel green fuel we are looking at solar energy we could look at hydrogen fuel cell and the list of green energy continues to be explored 
However, these are two that are pretty much working. We could do carpooling so that we'll have less persons driving so that results in less emission. We could cycle to work, ride a bicycle that reduces the carbon emission. Your respiration, the amount of carbon dioxide you're giving off is nothing in comparison to that which the burden of fossil fuel would have caused. You could walk it to work providing that it is near and safe that would of course reduce the carbon emission and of course you could use a vehicles that are hybrid hybrid cars so they they use a less fossil fuel and some amount of electric current in order to move about so there i would have given you more than the two requested for your exam many caribbean countries have banned single-use plastic items such as straws and plastic bags outline two reasons why this is a good decision for marine ecosystem and the wider community now these items become major pollutants after use and affect the life and proper functioning of the ecosystem now these pollutants end up in our water bodies and trap aquatic life the organisms being unable to free themselves often die or grow deformed and unable to reproduce now if they are unable to reproduce then you understand that we are moving closer to the extinction vortex which of course could impact significantly the food web for which we are a part of the high volume of pollutants often block waterways causing flood loss of property and lives they block sunlight and prevent the process of photosynthesis now if we are not having any photosynthesis taking place in the water then you understand that the aquatic plants will die as the aquatic plants die then we understand that we are emitting more carbon dioxide in the water which will increase the acidity and we are also reducing the amount of oxygen available to the water this of course will lead to the death of even animals as a result of the reduce or no photosynthesis in the water hence the removal of these pollutant mitigates the many environmental ills they cause so it is indeed a good idea what do you think tell me in the comment do you agree with the removal of the single use item from our environment thanks much for watching i am mr wilson from CSEC Biology, the cover page.